So, I am on the bus to Athens to meet my boyfriend. The ride from my hometown to Athens is quite a long one, almost seven hours. I tilt my head to the left and lean towards the window, looking out. Oh, in Greece, spring is beautiful. The sun is so bright that it gives life to everything. The mountains are green. The valleys are full of flowers. The smell of roses and lemons is all over the place. And the bird singing is loud and lively. But I see everything in gray. I feel like a stone is lying on my chest. I want to talk to someone, but no one is there for me. My parents, my sister, my friends have turned their back on me. They refuse to understand. I am on the bus to meet him. He is in Athens with work and he said, I need you. Leave everything behind and come here. So I cancel all my family plans and a bunch of work appointments and here I am on my way to meet him. A stranger is sitting beside me on the bus, and that stranger is a woman. She's in her early 40s and looks put together. We start chatting, and shortly after she says, Hey, you look very sad. What's going on with you? I have never taken a question more seriously in my life. <laughs> so I start narrating all of the drama that's going on in my relationship. Everything is bursting out of my chest like a tsunami. When I finish, I see the shock in the stranger's wide open eyes. <laughs> then she says, you girl need to see a string. <laughs> How does she talk to me like that? She doesn't even know me. As a matter of fact, this is not the first time I hear someone suggesting this. Go get a therapist. If I cannot make you get rid of this asshole, someone else should. I'm done. I am done. This is my father talking. <laughs> I cannot believe that a person so sharp as you, so empathetic as you are, let someone treat you the way he does. You should ask for help, Anayota. This is my best friend from high school talking. Love shouldn't feel like that. You need to talk to someone. You need to go to a therapist. That whisper is me. The tiniest voice deep inside of me. So finally I go to a therapist. A part of me just wants to speak with someone, someone who would listen without shouting at me. Another part of me wants help to fix this relationship. And maybe there is a part of me that seeks help to walk away from this relationship. But the therapist never tells me to leave him. It is as if she doesn't even have any interest in all this craziness that's happening in my relationship. Instead, she wants to learn about my childhood. <laughs> and talk vaguely about love and respect. What I thought would be a one-stop shop with my therapist, it actually turns out to be a journey that lasts up to this day. Fast forward 15 years. I'm now in Canada and I have a whole new life. That relationship is over long ago. It now feels... <laughs> it now feels like an accident I had, an accident that caused a wound that is now healed, but a scar is left on me. Like those scars that a broken piece of glass leaves on someone. The difference is that this scar is on my soul and no one knows it's there. It's Saturday night. I'm visiting my friend Yasmin. I knock on her door and she opens it. Right away, Yasmin whispers to me that there is a change of plans. A girl from her work, Winona, has just swung by. Uh, Yasmin seems very surprised because as she explains to me, she barely knows Winona, and Winona came to ask for her help. Okay, why don't we all have a glass of wine, I say. Yasmin is right. 
Winona looks troubled. Winona, who, by the way, looks so much like Winona Ryder, <laughs> avoids eye contact. Her nails are beaten down to the quick. She is moving her head slightly from right to left, and she's tapping her leg. When Yasmina says, Winona, why are you sad? What, what happened to you? Winona takes a deep breath, as if she was longing for this moment. I see her holding back tears. Oh no, a tsunami is coming, I think to myself. And I pour some wine. Winona starts talking about the problems she has with her boyfriend. And um, as she's talking, an image of a big six-pack macho guy is coming to my mind. Finally, Winona tells us what happened. She was saying goodbye to her co-worker when her big guy, Rocco, picked her up. Rocco started accusing her that she likes the guy. He started making scenarios, scenarios and, and acting crazy. Nothing she would say would make him uh, think rationally. She begged him. She cried all in vain. When she couldn't take it anymore, she screamed, it was over. He then said, don't you see I act like this because I want you? I take a sip of wine, and here I am with my boyfriend 15 years ago on the Greek island of Naxos. I put the glass down on the table, and I look at the server. The wine is excellent. You fancy him! No, I don't. You gave him your phone number! No, I didn't. Yes, you did! No, I didn't! After long hours of hearing scenarios and accusations, I scream, that's it! It's over! Hey! Don't you see I go crazy because I want you? You look even better than Monica Bellucci. <laughs> oh, he was creative. And he knew I loved being called like that because I was never the pretty girl at school. Winona is now sobbing. She says that Rocco is a good guy, but he has a lot, but he's been under a lot of, cres, uh, a lot of stress at work lately. He has a lot of responsibilities. He's a very important man, not like me, says Winona. <laughs> ah, I know. I know how the story goes, I think to myself. I heard something similar 15 years ago. I am a civil engineer. I build buildings. Do you know how many lives depend on what I do? What do you do, Panayota? Teaching? In other words, singing and being silly with kids? Mm. My therapist has told me about the patterns. I now see them happening. Winona is now determined that it's all her fault. She is the one acting like a child. He is the right one. That's why I always do what he says, says Winona. I pour my last glass of wine, and I finish it in one gulp. As Winona is talking, I can still hear his voice. Panayota, your makeup is too heavy. Go fix it. Your dress is too revealing. No, 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 no. Panayota, why the hell didn't you tell me that you'd be grabbing a coffee with your sister? Is there anything to hide? And as I hear Winona making excuses for her boyfriend, I realize I was doing the same. As I see her blaming herself, I remember feeling guilty for triggering his anger all the time. Oh, gosh. How did I let this happen to me? Was I like that? Was I Winona? Yes, I was Winona on the bus going to Athens. But now, I'm also the stranger on that bus, and I want to help Winona. I go sit next to her, I hug her and tell her, you have a wonderful life ahead of you, a life of your own. Please don't waste it. Please go see a therapist. <laughs> Thank you.